Welcome to Speakeasy Spirits. Today we're going to look at the daiquiri. And you're not going to need a blender or one of those giant slushy machines that line the sides of Bourbon Street. We're going to go back to the original recipe, just lime, sugar, and rum. Classic daiquiri has just three ingredients. A light or white rum, lime juice, and sugar. When it comes to the rums, you have a wide selection available. Any light rum will do. It doesn't have to be crystal clear like this Ray and Nephew. It can have some color up to something like this St. Augustine that has an amber color to it. It comes from the barrel aging. I prefer one of these rums with a little color to it. I feel it adds a little more body to the rum. For our daiquiri, this is going to be a shake and drink. So to our shaker, we want to add three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're going to need two ounces of a white rum. I'm going to use this Real McCoy three year. You have a lot of choices when it comes to white rums and there's a lot of really great white rums in a lower price point. This one comes in at just under $20 in most stores. Instead of using these sugar cubes, we're going to use a simple syrup, half an ounce. Simple syrup is just two parts sugar to one part water. You can make it at home or you can find it at most liquor stores. Add ice. And shake. We're going to strain that into a coop. And there you have the classic daiquiri. It's very well balanced between the acid of the lime and the sweetness of the sugar. Neither one is strong enough to overpower the subtle notes of the light rum. This is an excellent cocktail to begin to explore light rums because you can get a lot of the flavors of the rum through the drink. Our next drink is the national cocktail of Brazil, the Caipirena. This is a close cousin of the daiquiri using cachaça, a style of rum made in Brazil out of sugarcane. It can be aged in a variety of different woods, lime, and sugar. The main difference to this in a daiquiri is the way we make the drink. We'll be making this in the glass. Start by adding three sugar cubes. You can add two if you don't like your drink too sweet. Now we want to cut the lime down the pole, right down the center. The white part here we're going to remove. This can add some bitterness to the drink since we're going to muddle the lime into it. Once you have that removed, cut these halves in half again. And then once again, into cubes, take our four pieces of lime, add them to the glass, and now we're going to muddle that. We're not looking to completely crush and destroy the lime, we're just looking to break it up a bit and break down the sugar until it dissolves. This is also extracting some of the oils from the lime peel into the drink. Now to that we're going to add two ounces of cachaça. Add ice. and stir. It's important to get proper dilution in this, so we want to stir until the outside of the glass begins to get cold and some of the ice cubes have dissolved. We also want to make sure that any of the sugar in the bottom of the glass is fully integrated into the drink. And there you have the Caipirina. 
Even though this is using basically the same ingredients, it's a very different drink from the daiquiri. The oils expressed by muddling the lime add a bit more depth to it and complexity. The cachaca has a pleasant grassy note from the fresh pressed sugar cane. This is my preferred version of a daiquiri. The caipirena also opens itself up to some experimentation. I've seen a lot of variations using other fruits in here. In addition to the lime, you could muddle blackberries, blueberries. I've seen a banana caipirena. But I'm thinking the way I would modify this is to make a cherry limeade. So let's add a little cherry flavor using cherry herring. This is a cherry brandy. We're going to pour a quarter ounce. Add that to our cocktail. And give it another quick stir. And now it's a cherry limeade caipirena. The brandy brings up the sugar levels. It's a little sweeter, but not overpowering. It's still very well balanced. The cherry adds a bit more depth to the flavor, turns it into more of a fall cocktail than a refreshing summer drink. But overall, it's an excellent variation on the caipirena. Our next evolution of the daiquiri is going to build on these cherry and lime flavors in the chupacabra daiquiri. So let's start with two ounces of rum. I'm going to use this St. Augustine pot still drum. It's a little darker and a little more flavorful than some white rums, but we're going to have a lot of bold flavors in this drink and it'll hold up well. To that we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of lime. In place of the sugar we're going to add a quarter ounce of orgeau. This is an almond syrup. I make my own but you can find this at most liquor stores. For our cherry flavor we're going to add a bar spoon of Luxardo. This is a cherry liqueur with some bitter notes. And we're going to add a bar spoon of absinthe. Normally you'd now add a dash of orange blossom water, but in my homemade orgeau I go heavy on the orange blossom, so the flavor's already in there. Add ice to your shaker. And shake. We're going to strain that into a coop. And there is the chupacabra daiquiri. You can already notice a distinct difference between the first and the last daiquiri. This one has a cloudier effect from the absinthe and creates a bit of foam on the top. Right off the bat you get the bitterness of the Luxardo, a hint of cherry flavor. The absinthe is there with its black licorice notes, but it doesn't overpower the drink. You still get the notes of the rum, the sweetness of the sugar cane, some of the almond in the background from the Orgeau. It's a much more complex cocktail than the first two. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but this is one of my favorite cocktails. And there you have the evolution of the daiquiri, from a very simple but tasty recipe to one with more complex flavors. This is a great way to try out the flavors of white rum. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.